Let's go, dude. Hey guys, what's going on? Hidden Xperia here, and today I'm bringing you guys my first Warzone gameplay. Now, this was from EGX in Birmingham in the UK. Only yesterday, I got a chance to play Warzone uh, with obviously 23 other people, 11 on my team, 12 on theirs. And I'd like to consider this a good gameplay. I dropped uh, a 50 bomb, so I got about 51 kills and around 7 deaths. So, I think you guys are really going to enjoy this gameplay. I apologise for it being recorded with a GoPro. Uh, I didn't really have any other choice because I couldn't use a capture card there. Um, I had to use my GoPro, but I think the quality came out decently. Uh, it still retains 60 FPS and decent quality, and you can see everything that's going on quite well. Sorry for the shaky camera view as well. I had the uh, had the GoPro actually like attached to my shoulder, and obviously as I moved my shoulder, the GoPro moved, and it would kind of give it a bad view for a, a short amount of time. But I kept adjusting it, and it it stays stable. The camera is stable for most of it. Okay, so for the rest of the video, I'm going to be sort of analysing my own plays every now and then. So if I hit like a really nice clip, I'll say how I did it. Uh, and I will also be replying to requests that I got for gameplay from both you guys and the guys over at r-halo on Reddit. Um, I had a bunch of requests from my subscribers, r-halo users, and it, it was awesome. Thanks for all the requests, guys. I got, I tried to answer as many of the requests as I could. I tried to use as many weapons as I could. Unfortunately, I didn't get to use any vehicles because we were, we were being spawn trapped for half the game. Uh, the enemy controlled the garage, their base, and the East Armory, which meant that we were sort of locked in our base. Um, but I did manage to slay quite a lot, and I got some decent gameplay uh, with most of the weapons, but definitely with the Hydra, with the shotgun, and with the sniper. So anybody who was looking forward to see gameplay with those three things in particular, then you are definitely in for a treat. One last thing before I go and leave you to watch the gameplay and listen to the analysis and responses to requests. Uh, I actually got interviewed by the Xbox team after playing Halo 5. Uh, they asked me about my thoughts about the game, what I liked, what I didn't like, my past with Halo, uh, and why I love Halo so much. And I should be in an interview video with them uh, on their YouTube channel, which is probably either going to be the Xbox UK channel or the actual Xbox channel. Um, so I'll be sure to link that on my YouTube and Twitter when that's up. That would be pretty awesome to see. Uh, so yeah, enjoy the video and enjoy the replies to the requests. One of the things I honestly love most about this game when playing it was just how nice the hit detection felt. The hit detection was, it was so crisp, like in Halo 4. I mean, Halo 4's got a lot of bad sides, but the one thing you can really say that it did well was the hit detection. And this game definitely carries that on. I felt that the hit detection was perfect. There were no shots that I was shooting that weren't registering that I should have done. Uh, shots were hitting perfectly. It was really, re really rewarding to see the shields pop, just like it was in the beta. Uh, and it's going to play really nicely online, especially on the new dedicated servers. Here, by popular demand, as you can see on the screen, I picked up the Plasma Caster. Uh, and here I am just trying to test out the crossbow mode uh, and the smart scope for it. Uh, and honestly, this thing is very difficult to use. The plasma sort of bolt that you fire when you turn it into a crossbow fires super slowly. Uh, and it, obviously it doesn't track them. So it's going to take a lot of learning to get good at this. Like here, you see I missed this. I missed that shot really easily then. Um... A shot that I should have been able to hit quite easily. But I honestly think when people learn how to use the Plasma Caster and use it quite a lot when the game launches, there will be some awesome plays made with it. So that is the only time I actually get to use the Plasma Caster. I apologise for the pretty shit gameplay with it. Um, I tried, but I didn't really have much time to try out all the weapons. So I needed to kind of move on to the next ones. Here I'm trying out the DMR. Um, and I... See, this is my only worry about Halo 5. The DMR seems really kind of not balanced it the scope is too long range for it and it has too high of a fire rate i believe to actually sort of like be fair there we see a really nice sort of ground pound hover that i managed to do um a guy 
I was trying to kill below me, below my bridge with a sword. Uh, I hit him a few times with a DMR, he ran under the bridge. And I jumped backwards off the bridge and sort of hovered with ground pound at a height where he couldn't reach me with a sword, but I could finish him off with a DMR and the teammate picks him up. And there we have a really nice triple with the DMR. Uh, almost an over, but I hit the killing spree, so it's okay. Uh, the DMR seriously just seems to fire too fast uh, and have a range too great for it to be balanced, I think. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe that's just my thought and everyone thinks the opposite way, but I seriously think that it's sort of overpowered right now. Here we have a really nice sword. I think I believe I got a triple here. Uh, the sword is really nice. Uh, I didn't really get to use it much in the beta, actually. Uh, so it's sort of a new experience using it in this game, uh, and I really like it. It swings slightly slower than the Halo 2 sword, um, but it's really nice and consistent, and it makes a really nice sound when you actually hit somebody. Uh, yeah, I'll let you guys judge this for yourself. Okay, so the sniper in Halo 5 is now super satisfying to use. The new scope, which wasn't in the beta, which was an improvement from the beta scope, is a lot more responsive. It zooms in a lot faster and it's a lot nicer to use. Here as well, we have a really nice power position for if you're being spawn locked. Uh, this is underneath this massive mining truck type thing. Um, you can sort of weave in and out of the wheels. Uh, there are six big tires and you can weave in and out of them. Uh, and people don't tend to spot you under there. Uh, it's really nice to like control your spawn area and to help your team push. Okay, so here I pick up my first killing frenzy of the game using the DMR and sniper combo. Patrolling around the entrance to the tunnel uh, and around the mining truck where a lot of their teams sort of push through to try and get to our base. Uh, the DMR, like I said before, is really powerful in this game. It's got a really nice range coupled with a really nice fire rate and a five shot kill. So it's super easy to get people at long range with it. It's the only weapon that I'm not particularly fond of. Okay, so there we have some Spartan Laser gameplay. Um, it's actually the first iteration of the Spartan Laser that I've had trouble using. It's really quite difficult to use. I found the laser beam to be a lot thinner than Halo 4 and Reach, and especially Halo 3. Uh, and the the like, sort of laser magnetism on it is a lot lower as well. So I think this is going to be the first game where the Spartan Laser is actually going to be quite difficult to use. Uh, and I'm actually looking forward to that because it's my favorite, one of my favourite weapons in Halo and I've always felt that it's been quite easy to use and now that it's not, there's going to be a higher skill gap in it. So here we have the piece of gameplay that I'm probably most excited to bring to you guys and this is the Suppressor. Now, it wasn't the best weapon in Halo 4. Yeah, it was pretty good at short range, but other than that it was pretty useless. Now, as you can see, the rounds track enemies. So... When you, I'm pretty sure when you smart scope or when you don't smart scope, the rounds sort of hone towards the enemy uh, and track them similar to a needler and similar to the new bolt shot. Uh, as you can see here, I get a really nice double kill with it. This gun is so powerful now. I was really surprised. I wasn't expecting it to be this good, but the suppressor is definitely going to be a formidable gun now. It's going to be worth using. Uh, you're not just going to leave it on the floor when you see it. Uh, the smart scope is really nice. It makes it a lot more accurate, uh, but it still has quite a short range. So, you're not going to be getting people at mid-range with it. You're not going to be killing somebody who has a battle rifle or a DMR at mid-range. They will still beat you, but at close to medium range, sort of, it looks so useful now. So, here we have the shotgun. Um, honestly, my favourite iteration of the shotgun so far in any Halo. I feel that it, it feels really powerful in your hands. You'll see what I mean when you fire it. The, the kick that you get from it, from shooting it, like the way the, the gun kicks back into the Spartan shoulder is crazy. It makes it feel so powerful. 
and the sound as well it's quite low and bassy and it makes it also sound really powerful and guess what <laughs> it is powerful it's awesome the smart scope on it is not massively useful to be honest with you in any game in like in like any game with shotguns in it, it's never really been that useful to aim down the sights or scope in um, so the smart scope isn't hugely useful uh, but it's got a really nice sort of like crosshair when you zoom in as you can see there and here I, got, I pick up a nice double um, it's one kill with a shotgun and one kill with a DMR uh, the range of the shotgun has been significantly reduced since uh, was it the Gamescom build I believe where the shotgun was crazy the range was crazy on it um, it has been nerfed since then and there we have the teabag physics um, they are not like Halo 3's but they're not like Halo 4's I feel like they're somewhere in between the body doesn't bounce excessively when you teabag them uh, but it bounces like a nice amount now here we have uh, me patrolling around the mining cart um, moving up to the eastern armory uh, here with a the shotgun they're getting the second frenzy of the game second killing frenzy of the game and here you can just see me going to town on people with a shotgun it's so powerful um, it's just I really like the shot I don't know what it is about the shotgun it sounds looks and feels amazing uh, I have one round left here and I don't actually manage to pick this guy up. <laughs> Somehow missed the melee on him, which is embarrassing. Uh, I'm sorry about that, guys. But <laughs> the uh, yeah, I really, really, really like the shotgun. Okay, so here we have probably my favourite weapon combo: the carbine and the hydra. Now, the carbine wasn't in the beta. Uh, and not many people have actually had gameplay of it yet, I don't think. Um, the carbine is really, really, really good. Um, it fires super fast, has fairly high damage, um, but it's just awesome at cleaning up people that are weak, which is why I think it goes really well with the Hydra. Because if you can only tag somebody once with the Hydra, you can clean them up really easily with the with the carbine. Here we have me using the uh, the trick that you used to use in the beta, where you'd lock on with the, with the Hydra, and then just before you shoot you'd aim it in the sky and use it as a sort of artillery unit and the missiles would fly into the sky and down over cover into people and hit them uh, and that still does work in the in this build of the game and hopefully the final game because I really like that as, a, as an addition um, the Hydra as well it it feels just amazing I loved it I didn't get to use it much in the beta uh, but I in this build of the game at least I absolutely love it I think it's a really mechanically intensive weapon, so it's going to be hard for people to learn, similar to the Plasma Caster. But once people do learn how to use it properly, um, and do the artillery trick with it, then it will be super powerful. Here we have me just using the carbine to clean up people. Oh, look at this thing, it's an absolute beast. The gun is so good. I love this gun. Probably one of my favourite starting weapons in Halo 5. Cleaning up another kill here with the carbine. See that fire rate as well. The accuracy and the fire rate coupled together are incredible. They make for such a good combo. Just checking the scoreboard here. Uh, at that time I was on 49 kills. But the game was almost over. The score that we lost at was around 1000 points to about 310. So we didn't do great there. Uh, there's me picking up the 50th kill. Uh, my 50th kill actually. Um, and there it is. Around 50 and 7, 8 deaths maybe. Not too sure. Um, personally, I love Warzone. I honestly think that Warzone is going to be really successful. Uh, I think that, coupled with Requisition Packs, the new pack and opening system in Halo 5, those two will go together so well, and I seriously believe that it will keep a high player retention over a long time. Unlike Halo 4, it will keep a high player retention over a long time, because people will be constantly wanting to get these new weapons and stuff. Weapons, skins, armor, stances assassination animations, all this stuff that you can get in rec packs and then when people get these things they're going to want to show them off to, to their friends in Warzone which I think will help people stay playing Halo 5 for a lot longer. So thanks for reaching the end of the video, thank you for watching so much, if you really enjoyed the video then please be sure to drop a like, if you're new to my channel you're here from r slash Halo, from YouTube search, from anywhere, please subscribe if you enjoyed, it helps me out greatly and I'm going to be making a lot of content when Halo 5 comes out. So, a lot of good content. So, be sure to subscribe if you want to see that. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.